everyone welcome to our video tutorial for this autumn cowl that you can see Melba wearing here so <laughs> you're so funny so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial please like share and subscribe and we'll hope to catch you soon thanks bye okay so to make this cowl you'll of course need some yarn and I've got this beautiful pale green yarn here that I'm going to use for this project today it's actually something that's in my yarn stash I think I bought it from a second-hand store so I don't know its exact competi composition its uh, labels have all come away so I, I just by the feel of it I think it's an acrylic wool blend and it's got this beautiful sort of silvery thread running through it which just you know up levels it a bit so it's uh, it's really pretty I think it's going to be pretty for an autumn cow so whatever yarn you choose um, I would have it on the the finer end so a two weight would be kind of perfect this is around a two weight you could go up to a three weight but I would use something quite fine I think it's going to suit better this pattern You'll need a crochet hook and I would recommend that you go perhaps half a size to a size larger than um, what your what your yarn recommends. Um, this one I don't have a recommendation on this yarn but I'm going to use a three and a half. That's three and a half millimeters. You'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends, some scissors to snip your ends, and you might want to take measure just to take a measurement of where you want this to fall on your cat's neck so it can be adjusted as in it can be around the neck it can be a you know a bit more slouchy look so it sits lower on the chest um, if your cat has quite a fluffy neck you might want it to sit lower so take a rough measurement to get an idea of how how long you need your foundation chain to be and uh, you can take it from there but you know you you need to decide how you want it to look how you want it to sit and if you've got your cat with you you can take a rough measurement if you haven't got the cat with you um, if you're making it as a gift for example I'll include in the description box below just a kind of an average size for different size and breeds of cats so average neck size so use that as a guide and then um, make your allowance as you feel you need to Okay, so here's a cow that I've made previously, and this one here is another one that's in my yarn stash. Uh, this yarn, it, um, it's potentially a cotton acrylic blend, but you can see it's got these beautiful sort of jewel beetle colors to it. I really love this one. Um, so, you know, it's really beginner friendly. All we're working up is this simple tube. And you can control the dimensions completely so you can make it as long or as wide as you want depending how you want it to fit and sit. And the techniques that you'll need to know, and these are in US terms, uh, how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain. And then from there it's just a simple double crochet where we'll work up into these V's. If you can see those there. And then from there, just weaving in your ends. So absolutely beginner friendly and a lot of fun to work up. So let's get started. Okay, so take your yarn and make a slip knot on your hook. Lots of different ways to make, oops, lots of different ways to make a slip knot. So you make yours in the way that you do that. And just a reminder, I don't run through stitches, the basic stitches in any great detail here. So if you need any, any um, brush up on your technique then please check out another YouTube video heaps of heaps of channels online do basic beginner series um, I tend not to run through them um, you know super slowly so if you need some help there please please uh, work that out now we're going to chain in a multiple of three so to get started just chain up six three four Five and six and I'm going to show you this little trick because we're going to make a big loop with our chain and we don't want it to get twisted I'm going to show you a little trick for how to uh, make that happen easily so you've got your six chains just pull out your hook from that that last loop try not to open it up too much just leave it as it is we're going to insert our hook into that bottom chain and then 
back up into that last chain we did. And then we're just going to continue chaining. So you've got your six there. And then seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I you continue to chain, and you're going to chain in a multiple of three, as I said. I'm going to go to 72 chains for the size that I want, but you chain however long you want it to be, um, and you know how, how you want this to fit your cat, in a multiple of three. So I'll catch you once I've done that. Okay, so I've chained my 72, which just a reminder is a multiple of three. So you will have chained to wherever you want your um, size to be. So you can see that my circumference is going to be approximately, oh, just get that tail out of the way, approximately this. Okay, let me just give you an idea just before we move on. Is that my hook going to stay there? There we go. I'll just measure this for you just to give you an idea. So my chain is about 32 centimeters long, okay? Now all we're going to do, so this is a little trick, whenever you're making a, um, a tube and you don't want to twist your chain, all you'll do now is you'll just pull through as you normally would and you've got your, you've got your, uh, you've got your loop. Isn't that a cool trick? Okay. So from here, we're going to move on and do the first round. So chain four, three and four. So that counts as a chain of three plus one. Now the three, the chain of three counts as a double crochet. And then you've got a chain one. Now yarn over, we're going to double crochet back into, so underneath that chain. Okay, right in underneath that chain. So double crochet. Now, just move that tail out of the way. So now you're going to skip two chains. So one, two, and then you're going to double crochet into the next chain. Chain one, and then double crochet back into that same chain. And then we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. So skip two, so one, two, and then Double crochet into that third, chain one, and then double crochet back into that same chain. So we're just creating these little little V's. Okay, you can see those starting to emerge there. So what you're going to do is do that all the way around. Let's just do one more together. So skip two, place your hook into the third chain, double crochet, chain one, and then double crochet back into that same chain to create the V. So do that all the way around and I'll meet you once I get round to my other side here and I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I'm just finishing my last V stitch at the end of this round one and I've got two left and then I'm just going to slip stitch into the third chain. So one, two, three. So actually, yeah. Yeah, into the top of the third chain. Sorry, I thought I miscounted, but no. Yeah. Three and slip stitch. So now you've got your round one. Okay, so you've got all your little V's. And we're just going to move on now to row two. And every subsequent row after this will be the same. So after this, I'm just going to let you go ahead and create the size of the cowl that you want. So you've changed your four, your three plus one. You'll double crochet back into, so you've got your chain here. Now you'll double crochet into that chain space of that first V. Okay. And then you'll move along to the next V and you'll do your first double crochet there, chain one and then your second double crochet back in that same chain space. Okay, so it's just moving along in that same way, chain one, double crochet, creating your V, and each V will be coming from the chain space of the V in the row beneath it. 
Okay, so just keep moving around and then that's basically all we're doing. So you can see how super simple this is as a pattern. And just, you'll keep moving on until you've created the height that you want for your cowl. So if you want it to be a bit of a bunched look, obviously you'll make it a bit taller. If you want it to be smaller, you could, you know, you could just make a, a small one. Uh, no, you know, not very tall. I'll just get my one that I've made previously and I'll give you an idea of how, how far I went with that last one. Okay, so this, on this last one, I went to 14 centimeters high. So it bunches, it kind of sits on Melba, it bunches up a little bit, which I kind of like that look. I like it sort of to, to be a bit oversized and so it bunches. So you could just make a narrow one, you know, kind of half this size or even less than half this size. You can make even longer than this so it bunches up even more. So it's entirely up to you how you want this to look and how long you want it to be. So you, you'll just keep doing this round two, repeating the exact uh, process we've done for this round two for however many more rounds you want to go for. Okay? So what I'll do is I'll leave you here. I'll let you finish off your round two. I'll meet you back here and we'll just finish off this row together and then after that I'm just going to let you... Let you enjoy your crocheting. So this is a, I love this, um, this repeat. It's just, you, you know, you can kind of just get into a meditation with your crochet work and, um, I don't know, enjoy a Netflix show while you're, while you're crocheting. Whatever you want to do, you don't have to overthink this one. It's, it's just a great repeat pattern. So I'm going to let you go for it. I'll meet you at the end of my round two, like I said. And uh, we'll finish that round together, start round three, and then I'll just let you continue on. So uh, we'll catch you soon. Okay, so here I am round at the end of my round two. And I'm just finishing off my last V here. And the second double crochet. And then just once again that slip stitch into that third chain. And there you go. So I'm going to let you just work your way around. We're going to chain the four, just a reminder, the three plus one. And then the first double crochet just back into that, that V. So that one's always a little bit funny. It never looks exactly like a V because it's the chain and the, the next stitch along together. But then you start with your Vs. So chain one, and then working back into that chain one space once again. So each V is just on top of each other. Okay, so you can see that taking shape now, and I just love that. I don't know how well this is showing up on camera, but this pale green, I think, is just so elegant and pretty, especially with that sort of silvery thread running through it. I think it's beautiful for autumn. So anyway, keep on going. And, you know, make this as tall as you feel you want it to be. And I think I'm going to go actually go just a little bit taller than the last one I made. And you'll remember I measured it. It was 14 centimetres tall. And I think I'm actually going to go just a little bit more. Oh, excuse me for working off camera there. So I think I'm just going to go a little bit more, actually. I think I would like this one to be, you know, just a little bit more slouchy. This one um, is more, slightly more cooler weather. This one was a little bit still on the, um, you know, sort of more summery side. So it was a little bit lighter. But I think with this one, I'm going to make this just that little bit more, a little bit more tall, a little bit taller, I should say. And I think I'm going to, you know, just get a, a slightly more bunchy, bulkier look with it. So you keep going for as long as you want to, how many of ever many rounds you want to, and I'll see you once I get at, to the end of how tall I want mine to be. Okay, so I'm in my final round here. I've tried it on Melbourne and I'm really happy with the way that it's sitting, so I'm going to stop here. Let's just slip stitch 
into that final stitch. Now just to give you an idea of how high or how tall I've made this one, it's actually pretty close to the way I made the last one. I was going to make it slightly longer but I tried it on and I'm really happy with how this is sitting on Melba. So now we're just going to finish off. So just yarn over and pull through. Snip your end off. And then we're just going to weave in those two tail ends. So just take your darning needle. I'll just do one for you on camera and then I'll let you go ahead and do the second one. So just thread your needle. And it's just a matter of, so I tend to put it into the back. It's just a matter of working down these stitches here. So work, I'm going to work down that double crochet there. Pull it through. So just be careful that you don't pull it too tight. And then just move on down a little bit further. So you want to make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to come back and up and along. So uh, what I tend to do is go in a couple of different directions and just make sure that I've got that nice and secure. And then you can come back. Just make sure if you, when you whenever you double back, you're not going under the same loop. So just pull that through and I think that'll be fine. And then simply snip off your excess. And then once you've woven in the other end, which I'll do off camera, you're done. So what a fun project that is. You can work that up nice and quickly. And this is going to look beautiful. Actually, it does. It looks beautiful on Melba. Her eyes are kind of this color. So it's just going to look beautiful on her. So I would love to see photos, as always, of your cats wearing what you've come up with. So please send those along to catventurous.community at gmail.com. Or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So uh, thanks again for being with us and we hope to catch you soon. Bye. You good, Milva? Really? I'm getting the bunny kicks now. <laughs> oh, Milva. It matches your eyes. You crazy nut. You're purring. Oh, no bite. No biting. No biting. It matches your eyes, Melba. It's beautiful. Oh. Thanks, sweetie.